how do you manage houses all over the United States without ever having to leave your living room? Stay tuned. Welcome to another edition of Note School TV. My name is Joe Varnador, and again, we're here with you just like we are every Wednesday at 11.05 Central Time with another edition of Note School TV. This week, we have an amazing guest that you'll get to meet in just a few minutes, but you've come to expect us having amazing guests on Note School TV. So make sure that if you like the episode, make sure to hit that like button. And then if you have not already done so, make sure that you subscribe to the Note School channel and then hit that bell notification so that you will be notified before we go live again every Wednesday at 11.05 Central. So if you would like more information about Note School, then certainly uh, hit us up on noteschool.com forward slash TV, and we'd be glad to get back to you. So now, the news. All right, so here is the news for this week. Back at the end of August, we reported that there was more people flocking to the Sunshine State, to Florida, than any other state. So based on that, we looked at this and decided that, well, not only was that the case, but we also saw that Sacramento, California was the second um, largest metro in the United States where there was a net inflow of people coming in, right? So where were most of those people coming from? Well, they were coming from San Francisco and they were coming from Reno. So here's what happens when you wish for, you know, for your city to grow quite a bit. Well, major California city as of October 31st becomes the most unaffordable housing market in the U.S. Check this out. Home prices in the area have jumped over 21% in the last year. Wow. So there it is. Sacramento is at the top of the list for the United States' least affordable homes. Um, they are 65% of the houses in Sacramento are unaffordable to the people that live there. So again, be careful what you wish for. And next, we reported a couple of weeks ago that Zillow had bought, well, they had bought 3,200 houses in the second quarter of 2021. And so, you know, that, uh, well, here's what happens. Zillow, um, cities where highest percentage of homes that Zillow purchased are underwater. Two thirds of the houses that Zillow bought were underwater. So guys, analysts looked at that, their stock dropped, um, and it is, uh, it's a crazy time for Zillow. So now they're listing these houses. The biggest markets are uh, Phoenix and San Diego, but it also includes cities like Las Vegas and so on. So guys, again, you got to watch out what's going on out there in this market. We live in a crazy market where real estate is on fire, but there's always two sides to the story. And there's never been a better time to get into the note space and creative financing. That's the news this week. Now I want to introduce our esteemed leader and chief visionary, Mr. Eddie Speed. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Well, I'm I'm feeling a little like left out because I didn't sell Zillow a house. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you did sell a house and I think you did really well, right? <laughs> uh, well, real estate has been on fire, but uh, it's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, people charge the hill and uh, 
Um, the, you know, we talk a lot about the fact that there's some caution in this market. Not, yeah. not, that, not saying that residential housing is going to blow up. Absolutely not. We have a guest today, Joe, that is going to fill in a huge gap that people ask us all the time about. All yes. the time. Eddie, how in the world do you guys buy notes all across the United States? What happens if you if the loan went in default? What if you bought a loan in default, Joe, and you had to take care of the property? Is that possible? Can you do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, our uh, our guest today is going to tell us how to do that. And, you know, Eddie, we, we've, we've put into place the processes and the vendors that you need to make that happen as well. No doubt about it. So, uh, this is a very exciting episode. Joe, thank you for the news. It was awesome, awesome. Yep. Right? Great job right. of scraping. I'm going to see you at the end of the show, and we'll talk a little bit. And uh, I'm actually going to shake your hand tomorrow. And yes, I, you are. I we are going to shake your hand in a while. That's right. That's You're right. You're going to be here for Note Expo. So yep. we are, I'm looking forward to that. For sure. All right. All right. I'm going to let, I'm going to drop off and uh, let you bring on our guest. Okay. So uh, one of the questions people have all the time is people are really, particularly people that have been, you know, bought fix and flippers or people that have done rentals and stuff. We generally have sort of a mentality of, you know, we got to wear our tool belt. We got to carry our toolbox with us, right? We got to go do it all ourselves. Our hand has to be the one that unlocks the door of every property we own. And the reality is that's a myth. And the guy that we have coming on is an expert in managing properties remotely. And he has helped the banks manage literally thousands of foreclosed properties all across the country. So without any further ado, I want to welcome Mr. Mick Kuhn. Hey, good morning. Good morning. How are Everybody. you, my friend? I'm doing dandy. How are you today? Well, Mick and I get to deal with each other a lot because yeah. Mick has a part-time gig and he helps us here at Note School. And you are what is called, you are in charge of the liaison program here at That's Note true. School. That's true. So you get to help all the new students get to know about the membership side and all the stuff we do and training programs and deal labs and all that stuff. So, uh, but you are, that's a, that's a part-time gig with you. And you are also, you and your wife are experts in a, a very specific field, which is, we, we call it REO, right? That's what does true. that mean, Mick? Well, REO is uh, um, the department that a, a bank typically has. That's It actually stands for real estate owned. And mm -hmm. that's when a property is uh, going through foreclosure or has gone through foreclosure. And, uh, and now they own it. Now they got to figure out what to do with it. That's great. Yeah. Well, we're going to ask you some background on that. Uh, sure. But I, first of all, I think everybody would like to know a little bit about your note business, like how, how, how you progressed and how you've, you've added notes to your business. Let's talk about that. What's that look like? Sure. sure. Oh, uh, well, um, we've been with you for a good long while, Eddie. Uh, Janet actually found uh, uh, you and Note School through Deanne Clark, as we mentioned last night on one of the calls. And uh, uh, you know, since then, it was just a it was just an eye opening thing um, that we, we looked at each other. Janet and I looked at each other and said, "Hey, this is exactly what we've been looking for," because it it really dovetailed exactly into what we were doing anyway. You know, that's great. When you, when you look at REOs and the the waterfall of things that you know that has to be done. You know, switching over to the lender side of it was not that difficult to us. So, uh, you know, we added that to our business, uh, um, you know, and it's just allowed us a great deal of freedom. Yeah. Uh, Deanne Clark, she was she's a great friend of mine. She actually is a note school member also. Yes. Uh, great lady. Deanne has had over 40,000 REO agents in her network. And so that's an incredible number. And so she, then she could go negotiate with like Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac or FHA or some gigantic loan servicer that had lots of REO properties. And she had a network of REO agents around the country that could sell those. And that's what you guys specialized in. True. So Mick, you, you have dealt a lot with banks mm -hmm. that own properties across the country yeah. and they didn't have a representative they didn't have an employee going out there representing them. 
in those properties. They had boots on the ground, but it wasn't their boots, right? True. Absolutely. And you helped them manage that and you became an expert in that area. And then you, when you joined note school, you primarily focused initially on non-performing notes. That's true. And Absolutely. you weren't buying deals in your backyard at all. No, no, actually, uh, one of the first deals we bought was in New Mexico, yeah. which isn't, you know, you can't get too much further away from South Carolina. <laughs> so you Mick, know? Mick has written a book and we're going to talk about this today. And I'm going to show you how you guys can have access to the book. Mick has written a really nice book um, and it's called Property Preservation for Note Owners. And property preservation is essentially what the industry calls it. So Mick, I want to go back a little bit and uh, just just tell us a little about little bit about your background before you got to notes. Like what what were you guys doing? Uh, obviously, you joined note school, and I'm going to say 2012. 12. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yep, we flew out to Houston. Yeah. So uh, prior, so you've been that. with us nine years. That's a yeah. long time, and yeah. uh, we've got lots of stories and uh, lots of great things. But let's go back a little bit because I think I think people are trying to figure out like. What is it they do and how is it similar to what you do and how, what led you here? Sure. OK. Um, back in 2007, um, my wife, Janet, had a, had a real estate license. She'd already had it for seven or eight years, you know, and she was primarily focused on preparing and doing BPOs for banks and lenders. OK. And, and a know, BPO stands for what? Man? I'm sorry. Broker price opinions. Okay. What they are is just a very informal appraisal, very informal. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not used as an appraisal, but it's all it is is a price opinion from a from a professional in the real estate business. And she was knocking those out and, uh, you know, just moving along. And we decided that, hey, you know what? I think we ought to open our own brokerage. You know, so we opened a, a business called Southern Breezes Real Estate in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, and started off, uh, you know, just continuing on doing BPOs and, and some small reports and a couple of little inspections for banks here and there. You know, you go by and take a few photos and answer some questions. And in 09, um, one of the lenders actually contacted Janet and said, hey, can you handle one of the properties for us? And, you know, of course, Janet said, oh, of course, you know, no problem at all. And she's one of those people who flies by the seat of her pants. So, uh, uh, you know, she took that on and started. And, um, you know, from there, it just started to snowball. Um, you know, all of a sudden it started with uh, one company called LPS, which was Lender Process Servicing. Um, and then it rolled into all kinds of different other lenders with different platforms. One of the greatest things that she did was hooked into some of the networks. And I can't stress this enough, the, the people and the networks in any business are vital. They really are. They will give you so much information. It's crazy. Well, she decided that uh, she'd get into a couple of these uh, networks and they advised her, start signing up with this and sign, sign up with HUD and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and all them. Nobody told her she couldn't. So uh, she signed up with all them and all of a sudden we started, and everybody's familiar with the 09, 08 debacle. We started getting flooded and hammered with uh, listings. And so the lenders had a loan that wasn't paying. Correct. And then they foreclosed and then they ended up with this REO property, right? Real estate owned. That's true. And so then all of a sudden the lenders are actually having to deal with agents to get all of this massive property sold after 2008. That's true. Absolutely true. And we would get uh, these um, assignments in various form, in various states of foreclosure. Sometimes they hadn't gone through foreclosure yet, but the property was vacant, okay? So at that point, the lenders would say, hey, listen, we need you to get a preservation crew out there, okay? A preservation crew is a company that goes out and does the actual work on the house to preserve the collateral for the lender. Trash it out, secure it, winterize it, all yeah. that stuff, right? Secure, winterize, and then take an inventory of the of the items that are in the house. Mm. Okay. And it, you know, um, we don't tip we don't typically trash out or do any ev evictions until after foreclosure is completed. But having a complete inventory and checking the property to make sure it's safe, sanitary, and secure. The three S's. So we would we would come 
coordinate that for the lenders and get the, you know, and the billing and everything, you know, goes through us. And we would coordinate with the preservation companies to get this work done in a timely manner. And when you're dealing with, you know, 100, 125, 130 of them every month, you know, it, it can be quite daunting. So you, re you really mechanized this process yes. and your book uh, that, that we're going to tell people how they can get a hold of your book is, is a really a solid guide and talks about exactly what that is, who you would call. And so, um, and interesting, I want to make sure everybody caught this, like you were doing this preservation before the actual foreclosure date, the That's lender true. has a legal right to go secure their collateral. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. So if somebody's That's moved out, you, the lender has the right to go lock it up and have the house winterized and, and because you obviously you have to have it winterized, right? Or otherwise the pipes would freeze up and that wouldn't be a good thing. No, that's what we call experience. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want. <laughs> so you did all that. And then once it was foreclosed, then you would have a trash out and do all that other stuff, right? Correct. Right. After foreclosure, then they, you know, if, if it's all deemed as garbage and trash, you know, they'd have a trash out done, of course. Yeah. But if there's any personal property at that point, then you start doing other legal stuff like personal property evictions. And that can, that can get into a couple of little uh, different situations as well. So you really want to make sure that you keep in mind the rights of the lender and the rights of the borrower through ownership and foreclosure. You really and normally the attorneys, the attorneys know how to do that. So if somebody's a little bit scared, yeah. you know, well, I couldn't buy a non-performing note and stuff. There's some, there's some guidance there. And I know your book has some great information on that. I wanted to, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, you know, we always say that note school is a great place for burnout landlords yeah. because the common thread literally with a very high percentage of people that come to note school is, is they previously owned rentals. Mm -hmm. Did you ever do that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the experience we're talking about. Uh, uh, yeah. We, we, we did a couple of fix and flips. Um, not real thrilled with that in our, in our personalities. Uh, we've rented a few properties and we're definitely not landlords. So like I said before, you know, this the note business came along and we recognized this as, as exactly what we were looking for. That's you know? great. Yeah. You know, Bic, I, it would be a great time to say if somebody wanted to learn about buying non-performing notes, if somebody wanted to learn about alternatives to being a burnout landlord uh, and own notes and acquire properties with, with creative financing, this would be a great time to bring on our sponsor and talk a little bit about how somebody could do that. And we'll be right back. Well, hello everyone. It is Brian with the teaching team here at Note School, and I'm excited that I get to be the one to invite you to the upcoming Gold in Notes class. That's right. It is a one day deeper dive, deeper dive class that we call Gold in Notes because of how valuable this time spent is. This is a full day that we really get to dig into the nitty gritty, the whole world of creative financing, uh, not just how to acquire more deals, how to get access to more capital, how to defer all lot of the taxes for us as well as for the sellers that we're talking to and really learn how to create your own notes and really once you learn how to create your own notes this is really where we spend an entire afternoon really pulling back the curtain on what the note business is from wholesaling notes buying and holding performing notes to really build your wealth i'll even show you a strategy called partials which is by far the best wealth building tool i've ever seen in the real estate space and we're definitely going to spend some time talking about non-performing notes which is by far the biggest opportunity in today's marketplace solely because of the events that have happened over the past couple of years. This is when people are not paying their mortgages and we're going to make a lot of big money from these bad debts and we're going to help a lot of people get a second chance. It's an absolutely fantastic day. Come spend a day really digging and discover a lot of this stuff so that you too can start building your wealth. It's a day meant to really be engaging, bring your questions, bring your comments, bring your business problems, and we will see you there. All right. You've been to that class, haven't you, Mick? Several times. Absolutely. So you've written this great book uh, and it's on property preservation and you call it property preservation for note holders. 
And so I want to talk a little bit about why did you write this book? Now, and I remember everybody, Mick also works, helps us here at Note School. He's a liaison. He's an independent contractor, but he helps students get started. And so you heard a lot of questions, huh? Right, right. I've, I've heard many, many times, especially on the webinars and things, you know, somebody will come along and they say, hey, listen, I've, I've bought uh, performing notes and hey, guess what? I've got one that just went non-performing. What do I do? Mm -hmm. And then it's like dead silence. And you know, it's like, OK, fine. So at one point I looked at uh, the possibility of saying, OK, what kind of reference can we find to help students do this? I mean, outside of, of what Note School offers in our, in our deal labs. And um, I couldn't find anything. And I, I thought, OK, so this is a specialized piece right here that probably, you know, there's a perfect storm coming. There's a lot of NPLs coming along. There's a lot of newer folks joining Note School who are, are looking at getting into the NPL space. And they're going to need some reference or some type of at least guidance along the along the non-performing note space when it comes to preservation. So, you know, if it's going to be, it's up to me. So I've decided uh, about six months ago that I would put together a, a book and a guide um, to, to try to help people navigate through the minefields that are out there. You know, and that's uh, that's the that's the whole reason behind it was just to, to try to help people, you know, avoid some of the pitfalls that we've seen. Yeah. So let me make sure that everybody is aware that we are looking at right now about a half a million loans that are yeah. being sold in the secondary market. Uh, we do this on the Note School News a lot and talk about these billions of dollars of loans that were. 38 months delinquent and 40 months delinquent and so forth. And people go, well, they do the math and they're like, well, that loan was, those loans were delinquent before the virus. Those are called legacy loans. There's a half a million of those that are getting dropped in the market. And Mick, we presently have um, about three and a half million loans, a little over three and a half million loans that aren't paying. And, a, and just a tick over a million of those loans are in this legal contract called forbearance. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But wait a minute. There's two million loans that are not in forbearance that are just delinquent. And yeah. they're going to they're going to have a notice of default sent to them pretty quickly. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think they've uh, probably run out of rope. That's you know, in all of the in all of the 2008 thing, there was about five million houses foreclosed and sold over about a five year period. Right. And so there, so we have, we have not that level of an avalanche, but we have an avalanche of loans way more than people are talking about in the news, way more than our realtors honestly are quite a, are really aware of. So yeah. Mick, your, your timeliness of realizing there was no book written about preservation and you stood up and took ownership of this. And this really is just a, this is just a great book. I just cannot encourage you guys enough. We're going to put all the information, Mick, in the show notes of how people can get this. But uh, this is really just a, a great piece. And I really have enjoyed uh, reading it and, and, and just a lot of wisdom in it. You have solved a big problem because people are saying, I would love to do this, except the fear of the long distance real estate and what I would do. And what they really learn, learn to do really quickly is, is get on the internet or get on the phone and get a vendor to do the things that don't require their boots on the ground. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Vendors is a, is a big key right there. You know, um, lean on the professionals who are in the markets that your, your property's in, you know, some of the, uh, some of the uh, cities like Chicago and uh, Milwaukee, and some other cities may have ordinances with uh, snowfall. You know, they might require that you shovel and salt the sidewalks every time it snows more than an inch, you know, things like that. But the vendors will understand that and know that and give you recommendations. So you don't have to be an encyclopedia. Mick, I would say, and of course, we've dealt with this with thousands of properties in my shop. I would say there's nothing that you can think of to a property that there's not a preservation vendor that hasn't already managed those issues and usually thousands of times and many hundreds of thousands of times. Charles Mangan here in our, our office is an executive with our company and been with us many years. Uh, but Charles used to be with a property preservation company. And I remember him telling me this was around 2009. They were mowing a half a million 
lawns a week. Yeah, that's it's just Isn't that crazy, daunting. I, I just can't imagine it. So grass cuts and and securing it for winterizing it and stuff. Any any other things that are common that we hadn't talked about? Um, you know, winterization is probably something that uh, is is something you want to watch. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, if it's April in St. You know, St. Petersburg, Florida, you know, it's not something that you really have to understand and, and worry too much about. But if you're coming into November in Green Bay, Wisconsin, you know, yeah. yeah. So a lot of it's common sense, you know, what what's going to need, you know. And the other thing is stay away from ignoring things, okay? Little problems become big problems. And what I'm trying to say is Eddie just touched on, um, you know, mowing lawns and making sure that it's maintained because code violations can become an issue. And you know, once you get into the code violation radar, it's tough to get out. Code enforcement will put up with a lot of things, but they won't put up with being ignored. Amen. Yeah, we that that's an absolute case. And uh, we've learned that, uh, and I know you talk about code enforcement in here and what happens if that's the case. Mm -hmm. And I've had many panicky students, oh my God, code enforcement came out and said, they're going to do this and that. And I, we said, first thing we say is, have you called them? Right. And they're like, and then they're shocked. They're like, they, like somebody that owns the note has called them and says, I care about your problem. What do we need to do to resolve it? And it's just, then all of a sudden they're just amazed. So they just don't want to be ignored. And you do a great job of addressing that in the book. So you. Mick, you are, you are really, uh, you filled a big gap in the market. I really love that you've done this uh, well. We enjoy so much working with you and Janet. You have been such a touch to our students and you're caring and uh, really thrilled that you have embraced being able to take this on as a part-time project. Yeah, thank you. And you know why you could do it is because you've learned to scale your note business enough you can do that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, we absolutely love doing what we do. We uh, we love the people at Note School and Colonial Funding, like we're family. It's, uh, you know, that's part of the draw of, of Note School. You know, we saw it as a big community and a, and a family environment, and we just absolutely love it. Yeah, you know, it's funny. You talk to people and they kind of think that's like, you know, a sales pitch and that can't really be true and stuff. But um, I can tell you with a thousand percent integrity that that most of my closest friends are in note school. And that's just the fact. I mean, it's just we are family. I'm very excited to get to see you guys. Joe, come on back. Let's talk about Note Expo a little bit. Uh, we are, we are, we've got the, uh, we got the fire burning. It's up, it's coming up here really quick. Yeah, that's for sure. We are ready to get there. We're going to be traveling and uh, starting, uh, well, starting tomorrow, we're going to be arriving in, or actually starting Note Expo. And uh, mm -hmm. it's going to be a blast. And and again, you know, it's like you said, Eddie, you know, talk about this note school, the, the ecosystem and and all of that. And, it, you know, hokey, and all, but it's not. I mean, all I can tell you guys is just come and see and you will catch the uh, note school bug as well. And Mick, I've got to say that you really, you've opened our eyes, opened a lot of our viewers' eyes today about how you can do this. It's like Eddie said, you know, MPLs are a thing, right? Yeah. Over the last 30 days, uh, two of the GSEs, the government-sponsored entities, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, have sold over 20,000 non-performing loans out of, how many did we say could be at play? About three and a half million? Yeah. So it's just starting. And MPL is non-performing loans, right? I just want to make sure you guys catch that. This this guys is probably the most under talked about thing, right? That that is in the market. And when I speak to real estate investors, very advanced real estate investors, and I speak to them all the time and do these masterminds and I'm out and you know, and my my travels, and people just generally have no idea. And these loans right now are getting moved. These these legacy loans, Joe. A lot of these loans are already posted for foreclosure. You buy a delinquent note. We had we had a guy that bought a delinquent note on Friday, and it was set for foreclosure on Tuesday. <laughs> right? Absolutely. 
the the lenders the lenders have have they've charged these loans off. They they've made a management decision that make they cannot go manage all the assets that they need to manage, and that's why they liquidate them. And uh, you can be, you can take this book and as Mick said, with some good information and some good judgment, good judgment is required. Okay. And with some good judgment, you can, you can buy assets across the country, just like we teach. And you can buy these assets because this preservation, there is a gigantic network of them. And what a great book and, and uh, that will be very helpful to you guys to really learn how to do it. So, Joe, I'm going to let you take us home, brother. Very good. So guys, here's what you here's what we've done today, right? Note school, especially on this on this uh, NPL piece, non-performing loan piece. You know, at the beginning of the show, I said, "Hey, how can you do this from the comfort, right, of your living room? How could you manage uh, loans all over the country?" Well, you can do it with A, you got mixed book there. Uh, talking about property preservation, you've got Note School's experience, which you know includes Nick, and then you've got our vendor system as well. So, guys, yes, you can do it. And the best part of that is, if you're in a market that's just nuts, you get to invest where the deals are. So that's my that's my biggie right there. You can you can go where the deals are and never look back. So guys, thank you for being on today. Make sure and check us out on uh, at uh, noteschool.com forward slash TV. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. We have a guest who is what, well, I'm going to call her a, a triple threat. She has done everything that Note School has taught her and uh, in all three different areas of, uh, of, real, of, uh, of real estate notes. So we look forward to seeing her. Thank you so much. Um, and we will see you on the other side. Take care.